Welcome to Xinhua Life. This is Song Jia with Xinhua News Agency. I'm now at Huanxian in northwest China's Gansu province. Gansu used to be a transport hub along the Asian Silk Road. Now it is a major provider of power in the west to east power transmission project in China. Rich in solar and wind energy, Gansu has been providing electricity to other parts of the country by developing new energy and building ultra-high voltage power transmission networks. As you can see, behind me there are a few power towers, and up there in the sky are the UHV power transmission lines, which ensure the stable transmission of electricity for the energy consumption areas. Today, staff of state-grade Gansu Electric Power are going to conduct the maintenance and inspection work on the UHV power transmission lines. And look, the helicopter is taking off. It will send the staff to the operation site. Joining me today is Wang Wei from State Grade Gansu Electric Power Company, Extra High Voltage Company. He will share more details on our today's field work. Hello, Wang Wei. Some may ask what is ultra high voltage or UHV is. Could you please explain this a bit more? Wang Wei, hello. People may not be familiar with high voltage, so can you please introduce yourself? Ah, it's like this. High voltage means that the power is over 1,000 volts. 直流正负八百千伏机以上的输件技术，它可以实现远距离的输件，是我们往常能见的高压线的高压线路的好多倍，也被我们称作是，呃，电力高速公路。As Wang Wei said, UHV is composed of AC power transmission of 1,000 kilovolt and above, and DC power transmission of plus or minus 800 kilovolt and above. It is used to send electricity in long distances. Compared with the common high voltage lines, UHV is featured with greater efficiency and also known as the power highway. Would you please introduce more about the UHV transmission line for our today's field work? Can you please introduce more about the UHV transmission line for our today's field work? Uh, it's like this. 这条线路有着电力丝绸之路的称号，是中国西北地区建设的第一条特高压输电线路，全长两千两百一十公里，跨越六个省区，其中甘肃境内一千三百公里。This UHV transmission network is also called Power Silk Road, as it shoulders the task of transmitting electricity from the resource-rich province to the energy consumption areas. It is the first UHV transmission line built in northwest China. Stretching about 2,210 kilometers, the line covers six provinces. The length of the transmission line in Gansu section is over 1,300 kilometers. What's the main task for today's field work? Now, we are going to do what today? We are going to use the electricity from the power transmission line. 开展这个代建作业，具体的作业内容为就是补装引流金聚螺栓的销金。通过本次作业，我们可以有效避免金聚的松脱和掉落的风险，同时提升线路安全的可靠水平。The major task today is to carry out maintenance and inspection work for the UHV transmission line. Assisted by helicopter, the staff will be sent to the power tower to check and replace the wire bolts and pins. In order to avoid the risk of falling or loosening of the hardware, this field work can ensure the safe operation of the transmission lines. How will they go up to the operation site? It looks super high. 那我们的作业人员是怎么上去呢？我们的那个作业点特别的高，看起来。呃，我们作业点的距离地面的高度大概是四十米。作业的过程中，作业人员身穿屏蔽服。通过直升机吊篮法，悬挂的方式，呃，进入这个等间位，开展线路的检修工作。该方法既便捷又高效，是我们经常采用的一种作业方法。The operation site is about 40 meters high above the ground. 
and first, the staff will get into the hanging basket, which are connected to the helicopter by special strings. And the helicopter will then take them up to a designated position. It's quick and efficient. What kind of special tools are used to keep them safe during operation? 那我们的作业人员有什么特别的防护装备吗？啊，是这样，作业过程中，人员身穿的是屏蔽服，并且戴的是屏蔽面罩。个人防护装备是非常重要的。它可以通过减少暴露风险来保护作业人员的安全。The operator wears a set of insulated suit specifically made for ultra high voltage operation environment. Personal protective equipment is important because it protects or shields operator's body from electrical hazards. Is helicopter widely used in the UHV transmission line operation, and what are the advantages? 那以往的特高压带电作业是否是都使用了直升机？和其他作业方法相比，这种作业方式有什么优势吗？最早作业人员需要攀攀爬铁塔，作业耗费的时间很长，体能消耗也很大。之后我们使用无人机结合电动巡逻装置进行等单位作业的方法，但是它也有一些限制。这次采用直升机吊篮房作业，能够减少特殊地区运输和人员劳动强度大的问题，提高作业效率，降低安全风险。王伟 told me that initially operators need to spend hours climbing up to a tower, which is physically demanding and time-consuming. Joint inspection and electric lifting devices are used, but the result is still not that satisfactory. With the assistance of helicopter and hanging basket, the amount of working time, number of operators could be reduced. Difficulties coming with the hilly gully lowest plateau are solved as well. It greatly improved working efficiency and safety. How often will such operation be conducted, and how long it will take? 这种特高压的高空作业通常多久进行一次？每次需要持续多长时间呢？呃，这种作业要视情况而定。当发现故障的时候，就需要开展作业。像这样的直升机单件作业，一般会持续一到两个小时。王伟 said that as soon as something wrong is found, operation assisted with helicopter will be conducted, and it usually take about one to two hours. How many ultra-high voltage transmission lines are there in Gansu, and how much power are they capable to provide? 目前呢，甘肃的特高压线路有哪些？他们可以为其他地区输送多少电量呢？呃，目前甘肃的特高压线路有正负八百千伏千中线、齐绍线、青玉线和正负负一千一百千伏集全线，总共有四条。其中正负八百千伏千中线单日可向华中地区输送电量。超过一亿千瓦时。Currently, Gansu has four UHV DC lines in operation, of which the Tianshan to Zhongzhou line itself can provide over 100 million kilowatt hours of electricity per day. How will the UHV power project help coordinate the energy structure and improve the green development of energy sector? 那您认为这种特高压的输电项目，它对于优化我国的能源结构有什么样的作用呢？呃，特高压线路构建了西建东输呢，清洁能源大通道，促进西部清洁能源的开发利用，减少中东部化石能源的消耗，能够优化生态环境。王伟 believes that it solves the problem of transregional power transmission of over a long distance and creates conditions. For extensive development of renewable energy resources in Western China, and cost tons of carbon dioxide, it helps to improve the environment. Thank you, Wang Wei. It is clearly that the development of power transmission project will not only ease the ecological stresses by the coal-fired power plants, but also help optimize China's energy structure. By developing green energy sector.
The power transmission projects are also in line with China's goal of achieving high-quality development and help the country meet its emission targets, peaking carbon dioxide emission by 2030, and achieving carbon neutrality by 2060. That's all for today's Xinhua Life. Thank you for watching. See you next time.